time, God. Oh. 
goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah, because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We just want to be wherever you are in your presence, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be. Travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King for your. to see you, to behold you as my King. Lord, if I find You can sing it. I gotta be where you are. Said I wanna be. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where. Gotta be where you are. Said I wanna be where. Wanna be where you are. I gotta be.
That song sounds like a love song. <laughs> it doesn't sound religious. It sounds like a love song. I start thinking about that when I was courting my wife. No matter where she was, I wanted to be there. Beyond our journey. You know, Jesus says this. He says to the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation, he says, you've forgotten me. Your first love. Something's happened. Sometimes we get comfortable with the one we love. We take them for granted. And I think that warning to the church is so that they wouldn't take them for granted. Sometimes we got to remember what this is all about. Yeah. And this ain't about religion. This ain't about quote unquote churchy stuff. This is about a relationship. God so loved me. Amen. And I love him because he loved me. And since I love him, I want to be where he is. And where I'll, 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 I'll cross the hottest desert to be with him. I'll get up early on Sunday morning to be with him. I, I will meet him where he said he's going to be at because I, I want to be where he is. I'm just talking about a love story, y'all. This is, this is a, when, when I tell my story, you know the old songs say, well, when we get there, we'll tell our story. <laughs> my story is going to be a love story. You know, it, it will have all the twists and turns of, of, of any dramatic love story. How I wasn't looking for him, but he came looking for me. And where he found me at is a place of an unlovable place, but he loved me anyway. And his love got me out. His love cleaned me up. His love established me and started me on my way. And his love kept me through the process. When I wanted to turn around, he pulled me back. Y'all don't understand about love. I'm talking about a love story. Listen, you got to get your love back for Christ. I don't care what's going on in the world, what's going on in your life. The, the love that you have for Christ, he takes notice of. So I want to thank you for reminding us of what this is really about. I want to be where you are, Lord. And there's nothing I won't do. You know, come on, anybody in love anymore? There's nothing you won't do. You know, when real love is, is in place, there, there's, a knee, uh, there's, no re how put it, there's no regret for the sacrifice that it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You don't mind sacrificing for real love. When you, if you're in love with somebody that ain't, ain't sacrificing for you, you better check that relationship. They ain't willing to give up something for you. Hallelujah. And you ain't willing to give up nothing for them. Yeah, that's a problem there. That's not, that's not a relationship. That's a situationship. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Good morning, church. <laughs> Isn't it good to be back in the house of the Lord? 
Amen. I know we're celebrating uh, Independence Day, 4th of July, and, and we thank God for uh, that things are opening back up and people are, are traveling and people are getting together and, and uh, families are getting together, friends are getting together and, and fellowship, and that's a good thing. Amen. Amen. But let not the church be the last ones to get together. Amen. Let make, make the, see, the, the fellowship of the believers, the, the, the holy convocation, this is what God called us. He calls us a holy convocation. He calls us together. Amen. That he might minister to us, that he might meet us there. And this is something that he initiated. And so let us not forget why we do what we do. Amen. This is not just a nice thing to do. It's not, a, it's not like a ball game we schedule in. This is what we are called to do. We are the called out ones, the ecclesia. Amen. And so let us not forget that. Amen. So it's important that we do those things. And, and, and as things are opening up, we open up as well. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm open. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, just a quick, uh, some quick announcements. Um, we met with the Project Thrive group this past Wednesday. And we established the third question. Remember, we dealt with the past. The second question, we dealt with the present. Our third question, we're going to deal with the future state. And this is, this is important because we need input. One of the, some of the issues that came up in the present state was a lot of people said, I didn't know. I didn't know this is what was going on. I didn't know how we got here. All those things like that. Well, as we develop our future step, this is your opportunity to be involved. So what we're going to do is on the third Wednesday of August, we're going to have a fellowship uh, at, at 6.30 p.m. In fact, we're going to start at 6 o'clock, a fellowship uh, dinner or lunch, whatever you want to call it, and then we're going to break off into groups and, and, and talk about how do we go from the present state to the future state. We're going to paint pictures of, of what, what is the God's vision, a, a, a God's dream that he has and that you want to input in it. Amen? And so that's what we're going to talk about, a future state and what, what it would look like. What are some of the things that you want? What are you the things you want for our youth, our, our children, our adults, our seniors, and, and for the local congregation? For what, what impact should we have in the community? All those things will be put into and we'll develop what is called our future state. And then our job then is to build a bridge from the present state to the future state. Am I right, Dr. Johnson? Am I on, am I on target? Okay. Dr. Johnson has been leading this project Thrive Up for us. So, um, but that's very important that you be involved in it because, listen, it's like a person complaining, but don't vote. Okay. So this is your opportunity to get involved and to help have impact into the direction that we go as a church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Without a vision, people perish. One translation say, without a vision, people run wild. They do what they want to do. Amen. But we will be a church with vision. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. It's time for us to pray over our offerings. Those of you who have already done it through the app, God bless you. That, that, that will be on the screen if you want to do it on the app. Those who have given already and those who will give, we just want to thank you for your obedience. As I said, you can't be in a relationship without any type of sacrifice. And I think as Apostle Paul says that this is, he talked about the offering, is, is how we demonstrate our love for Christ. Not that he needs it. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in it. The Bible said he found it upon the sea. He established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. He does not lift up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. This is the generation that will seek him, that will seek his face. Selah, which simply means think about that. Amen. Father God, I thank you for the gifts. I thank you for the giver. I thank you, Lord, that all that we've ever needed, your hands have always provided. Thank you for your faithfulness unto us. Thank you for the opportunity to demonstrate faithfulness back to you, O Lord. We thank you that every need is met, that there is no lack in your house. So we ask, Lord, that you bless every heart and every hand and every household that has given in toward this ministry, that it will also experience no lack in Jesus' name. Open the windows of heaven, pour out the blessing, as your word has declared, that there won't be room enough to receive it, O God. Let it be a blessing to the next generation. In Jesus' name, amen.
just want to be happy. But if I keep on doing the things that keep on bringing me pain, there's no one else I can blame if I'm not happy. Wasted time, but now I can see the biggest enemy, it was me. So I'm not happy. Cry yourself to sleep. Shout and raise your hands. It won't change a thing, child, until you understand. The healing will never start, so I can be happy. Will I ever be happy? Cry yourself to sleep. Shout and raise your hands. It won't change a thing, child, until you understand. to see my friends the quarrels are with us today for those of you who don't know brothers and sisters quarrels stand up for those of you who don't know this is lavar's father mother and father stand up lavar <laughs> so we're happy to have you with us as well i'm also happy to see pops with us today hey and sister Child mother children's with us today y'all doing good amen Good to see you, Dad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of you, both virtually and in person, we're honored to have you with us on this, the Lord's Day. I know it is a holiday, so we won't be long. I know you're ready to get to all the barbecuing and, and cookouts and all the other things that you're doing, but amen, so I'm going to let you get to it. But there's a word that you need to feast on first. 
and it's, for, it's the word of the Lord. This is the first Sunday of the month, and as our custom here at Church of Messiah, we take communion on the first Sunday of the month. And it's important that we do that, not out of ri ritual or out of some type of, of uh, a traditional thing, but it's a powerful thing. It's an ordinance that God told us to do. But there's some power that's released in that. And we're going to talk about that later, but I want to draw your attention to, the, to a scripture that the Lord impressed upon my heart just this morning. Uh, what I was planning on doing yesterday, uh, he put it on the back burner, but this is for us today, and I believe someone's going to be blessed by it. It comes from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 26. And I'm going to begin <clears throat> with the 17th verse, Matthew uh, 26, verse 17. And if you can, I would like for you to stand as we give the word, the honor. Amen. And I won't ask you to stand anymore until the end. How about that? So, Matthew chapter 26, verses 17, and we're going to read down to 22. And it begins, and, <clears throat> and it begins at these words, Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where? Wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, the master said, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? I want to use that for a topic or a subject this morning. Is it? Me. Is it, is it me? Is it me? See, it's one thing to, to look at other people or to know some things about other people, but do you know you? Do you know what you're capable of? Do you know you? Do you compare yourself with someone else or do you? justify what you do by what other people are doing? Or do you really, do you really know, do you really know you? Now, I ain't talking about the you that show up on Sunday morning. I'm talking about the you that nobody sees. You, do, do, do you know, Lord, is it, is it me? Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power that's in you. I thank you for revelation, God. You've given us revelation, that you will give us revelation on today. Now, Father God, I ask that you will let me speak your word freely, unhindered, unchecked by any outside or demonic influences, oh God. Let the pureness of your word flow from the throne. And through, this, through these feeble lips of clay, that your people might be saturated with power, with your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 17 begins, he says, now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread. This was the preparation of the first day of the Passover. The Passover was, was to commemorate the time 
when the children of Israel or the Hebrews were in Egypt in bondage and God sent the plagues upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians for the purpose to get them to let his people go. The last plague was the angel of death. And God, Moses gave, uh, God gave Moses some specific instructions on what to do to prevent this plague from entering into the houses of those who trust in him, those who were his people. It was to prepare a lamb, one lamb per household, one lamb per household. And the blood of that lamb was to be smeared on the doorposts so that when the death angel passed over, if they saw the blood, it was instructed to leave that house alone or to pass over that house. That's where we get the term, the Passover. The unleavened bread was the bread that was made without yeast, without anything that would puff it up. They would eat of it and eat of bitter herbs. This was the time of the Passover. This time that we're talking about now, had this, 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 fest, this feast had went on from generation to generation. Now Jesus shows up, the Lamb of God, as he was identified by John the Baptist, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The one who says in the Hebrews, the volumes of the books, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Sacrifice is an offering that has no pleasure, but a body thou hast prepared me. This is the Lamb of God. And, and it was during this time of preparation for the Passover that the disciples, in their undiscerning way, thinking about keeping tradition, asked Jesus a question. The question was, where? Where will you want us to prepare? Where do you want to do the Passover? Where, where should we keep it this year? Jesus says to them, he said, go into the city. Now, I want you to get this because he's talking to his followers. His followers are the disciples, the one who's been with him for three years, the one who knew that he was the one who could perform miracles. He fed thousands. He, he healed the sick. He walked on water. He opened blind eyes. He worked miracles. He cast out demons. He, they saw him. They were his followers. They trusted in him. Yet it was these disciples who Jesus instructs. Y'all not with me right now. He instructs his disciples to go into the city and to look for a man. A man. A man. An unnamed man. The Bible does not give us who this man is. He doesn't give us anything about who this man is. I got stuck, y'all, this morning on the characteristics of this man. And one of the things I said to myself, Mother Pat, I said, I want to be that kind of man. A kind of man, watch this, watch what he says. They say, go into the city to such a man. And say unto him, the master said, my hour or my time is at hand. This man had discernment to know who the master was and what time it was. The disciples had no discernment of this. But the man, such a man. Such a man had so much spiritual discernment where when these disciples came and said, the master, I know who you're talking about. The master has told us to tell you his time has come. Now the ones who's telling the man had no discernment on what time it was. But they're saying, this is what he told me to tell you. And the man, and the man says nothing. Sometimes you don't have to say nothing, but it's what you know and it's what you do. Watch this, watch this. He says, they said, my, my master said, my time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at your house. 
I want to be a type of person when the Lord speaks that I don't have to go get anything ready. Here it is, Lord. My house is already ready. And it's prepared. It's prepared for the time that you're speaking of. This man was in tune with the Lord. I don't know who he was. But I want to be such a man. Don't, don't you want to be the type of person that when the Lord speaks, all you ready to do is say, yes, sir. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I don't have to check in with nobody. Everything is all ready. I ain't got to go get stuff ready. I ain't got to get stuff clean because I've been preparing for this day. They went to such a man. Where the, where the spiritual folks at? I need y'all praying right now. Because I'm speaking something that you ain't catching. All right. Amen. The, my time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples, my 12 disciples. Let's, go, let's get practical with that. Me and my boys, all 12 of them, Coming to your, I didn't ask you. We come into your house for a feast. We gotta kill some. We gotta kill a lamb. We gotta cook some herbs. We gotta do all this stuff at your house. That means you have to have the substance. You have to be prepared. You have to be ready for it. For such a time, the discernment. The discernment is what I'm hearing right. Discernment. This man had discernment. To know what time it was. Think about it. If the Lord was to call you. Such a woman like you. Such a man like you. And say I need. For this time is of essence. What would your response be? Well, you got to wait a minute. I got to get some stuff cleaned out in my house. I got some stuff I don't want you. I don't want you to see. Are you following what I'm saying? See, there's, there's some principles behind being ready. There's some principle about having your house in order. Amen. Remember, remember in the time, Brother Wyatt, how when, when, when Israel would go to war and they would, 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 God would tell them to put a paddle? On their, on their belt, not just the weapons, but he said, keep a paddle or a shovel, a small shovel on their pet belt. He says, he says, why? Why do you do that? He said, well, when you go out and relieve yourselves, you can cover it up for the Lord walking through the camps. Yeah. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. In other words, the Lord don't want to see your mess. All right. All right. I'm walking through the camp. I want things in order. When he walks through your house, he wants things I, I want to be that man. I, I, I realize that I might not be ready for that right now. I need to get ready to be that type of man. I know I'm spending more time on this, but I think it's important that we contrast between that man and these disciples. That man. And disciples did as Jesus appointed them, and they made ready that passed over. In other words, they went into the city. They found the man. There was no problem. I said there was no problem. They made ready the Passover. Now when evening, evening was come, Jesus sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he says, watch this, Verily, most assuredly, I'm calling you out. One of y'all will betray me. Now understand, they've been walking with Jesus over three and a half years. You don't walk with a group of people that long without beginning to know each other. 
You know, if someone says something about somebody, you pretty much can pick up who it is. Amen. I was, um, I came into church yesterday and Walter was, he had a shampooer out. Shampoo and carpet and shampoo and stuff. I asked Walter, I said, Walter, what, what, who told you to do that? He said, the Lord. That's a good man, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, uh, but so you don't walk with people without knowing some of their characteristics, some of their traits. I, you know, they were there when the woman came into the room with the alabaster box, and she broke the box on Jesus. And some of them disciples said, you know which one it probably was, and said, why was this waste made? Uh-huh. There's, there's always someone who's going to look at things from a, from a, from a, 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 a earthly or a fleshly perspective. Why, why y'all wasting this on him? Why y'all doing this? Why are you doing that? It's always, they, you know, they were there. They were there. They know who carried the bag. They knew all those things like that. And it would have been very easy to say, well, I know he ain't talking about me. I, I'm going to take this silence as I got your attention. Okay. It's real easy to point the fingers at, at other people when you know something about them. Peter says, one of y'all were, were, was fornicating. Okay, I'm going to go there. So, okay. Well, one of y'all was having a fit. No, I, I better go there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, one of y'all was stealing. No, I didn't know you had a. One of y'all lazy. Uh, no, I ain't going to say that. Let's see. Uh, but he used the word, one of you has betrayed me. And the way he said it made each one of them consider or examine themselves. He didn't say one of you are, are trying to kill me. He didn't say one of you has stolen. He didn't say one of you have fornicated. He didn't say one of you had lied. He, didn't, he said, but betrayed me. Betrayed me. Lord, the Bible says that each one of them began to be very sorrowful and they asked him, Lord, is it me? It wasn't, a, it wasn't trying to be polite and, and just getting in with the crowd, but there was something they examined about themselves that found that, that they had the capacity within themselves to portray him. Lord, is it me you're talking about? I can't worry about Peter, what he's doing. Is this me, Lord? Because I want to get some things right. Is it me? Is it me? I'm looking. Your words have cut right through me. So I have to examine myself. I can't examine to see what Matthew has done. What Martha or Mary has done. I've got to examine me. And as I examine me, I find there's some issues. There's some stuff. There's some problems. There's some things that can be can can, can, can that, that says that I, I I could have possibly betrayed you. So Lord, are you talking about me? Before you get too down on yourself, I I think that this is a good thing. I know it don't feel good when we see things. David said, David said it like this. When you said to me, seek you thy face, my heart said, thy face, Lord, will I seek. And right after that, he said, hide not thy face far from me. Don't get angry with me. Don't put your servant away in anger. Because when I was looking for you, I saw me. And when I saw me, it didn't look like you. So don't get mad at me. Because what I'm seeing is a disfigurement of what I should be. When we take the time to examine ourselves, 
is examine our commitment, to examine our walk, to examine our talk, to examine our lives, and not judge it based on what someone... See, that's what we do. The Bible says when we compare ourselves with others, we're heir. The Bible tells us about the race that is given to us. My race is not your race, but you got to run your race. The Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us and looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, I was in the race, but I saw a hurdle and I didn't feel like running a hurdle, so I'm going to sit down till somebody moves my hurdle. I committed that I was going to do it, but I didn't see that coming, and so I'm going to move because if, uh, if you wanted me to do it, then take it out of the way. Wow. Is anybody here what I'm saying to you? I, I, I can't call it for you. <laughs> you got to call it for yourself. Is it me? Paul, who wasn't there on the Lord's day, gives us a picture of what it takes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says, It was the same night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took the cup and gave thanks and he gave to his disciples. This is why I love Jesus. This is one of the reasons why I love Jesus, Ashy, is because he's not like me. Because if betrayal hurts deeply, and betrayal by a loved one or a friend hurts that much deeper, Amen. it makes me want to quit. Yeah. I'm about to do this for you, and you're going to betray me? Well, I ain't going to do it for you then. But that's not Jesus. The Bible said the same night, in which he was betrayed, he still took the cup. Paul says in, in, 11, in 1 Corinthians 11, he says, now I'm talking about us now. He says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shoo. That word shoe is a proclamation. You were making a declaration. You do shoe the Lord's death till he come. Uh huh. He said, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him so. And let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. He says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So as we prepare for Communion Sunday, what the Holy Spirit is saying before we take it, ask the question, is it I? Is it I, Lord? In those areas where, you, where he shows you the capacity, Repent because you need to take of the power that's in the blood and of his flesh.
Can you say amen today? Amen. So those of you who are watching virtually, I want to pray right now. I want to pray before we enter into this next realm of the service. I want to pray that you don't take this. Unworthily can simply mean taking it lightly, taking it without any discernment, letting it just become a form of tradition or religiosity with no means of having the impartation that it takes place in your life. I really believe, I truly believe when we do this properly, miracles take place. We're, because we're doing something in the, in the earthly realm that is ordained in, this, in the heavenly realm. We're bringing in the supernatural into the physical. Because when Jesus' blood was shed and it hit the mercy seat, the Bible said he did it for us. And that it was he that ordained that we should do this as often. We can do it every day. Amen? Amen. But when you do it, make sure you examine yourself. Ask yourself, is it I? Did I betray you in what I said about sister so-and-so? You told me to love her, but I can't stand her. Is it, am I betraying you? Yes. Am I betraying you when, when, when you tell me to do something and I choose not to do it? The answer is yes. Am I betraying you when you tell me to forgive and I hold on to grudges and I have all these unresolved issues? Yeah. We should be conforming to the image of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So judge yourself. Don't condemn yourself. He says if you judge yourself correctly, you won't stand in judgment. What a power that he's given us. He's given you the power to judge yourself so you don't have to judge, so he won't have to judge you. And if you judge yourself correct, and what I, what I mean by judging, it simply means examine yourself. And confess with your mouth, God, you're right. Your word says this, but I'm doing this. I'm not going to make an excuse. I'm going to agree with you. That's what confession is all about. Finding agreement with God. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this your word. I thank you, Lord, that you are ministering to us right now. Both virtually and in person. Holy Spirit, as you enter into the homes and the hearts of the, those who are watching, Lord, convict without, condemn, without condemnation, Lord. Your conviction is your sweet invitation to draw closer to you. So, Lord, if there's some things that's going on in our lives, we repent of them right now. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and our trespasses, our iniquities, and that we might be restored to a proper fellowship with you in Jesus name amen, amen. those of you at home if you don't have grape juice get some orange juice get some wine get some crackers because we're going to pray for it anyway amen the Bible says I'll give you a minute to get it together I know these little packages are kind of hard to open up that's why I opened my before service. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says the same night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took bread and he broke it. Broke it. And he said to his disciples, take, eat, for this is my body which is given unto you. Let us commune together. After, after the same manner, he also took the cup. And he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. A testament is a covenant. It's the last will and testament is in his blood. 
He says, do ye this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I'm compelled to pray before you do this because he says, do it in remembrance of me. Lord, we come setting our hearts on thee right now. Lord, remember, we remember by your word the torment that you experienced in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible said you prayed and you sweated like drops of blood that this cup will be removed for you, but nevertheless, not your will, but the will of the Father. We remember how the Roman soldiers came and they spat upon you and they hit you with their fists they beat upon you and they led you from judgment hall to judgment hall where they couldn't find any accusation that could stick. They put a crown of thorns on your head after they had beaten you and they put the beam of the cross on your shoulder and you walked the cobbled streets of Jerusalem while the crowds jeered and mocked you. You walked through the streets. While they laughed at you, you walked through the streets. You went up the hill called Golgotha where they nailed nails in your hands and in your feet and they stretched you wide. And God, we remember we remember, Lord, how they pulled you up in the throng of the cross into the ground and how you laid hung suspended between heaven and earth. And the malefactors on either, on either side of you began to mock you until one read the inscription, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. And he said, remember me when you enter your kingdom. We hear the words, Lord. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We hear your words, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We remember, God, we remember how, we remember how the stones, the earth began to quake, the stones began to crack, and the sun refused to shine. We remember, Lord, how you, gave up the ghost, hung your head, and you died. We remember, God, our mind is on you right now. And you said, do this in remembrance of you. So we remember the sacrifice. Let us now drink of the cup together. Hallelujah. Release in our Lord. <clears throat> Release favor in your people's life. Release healing in your people's life. Release vision in your people's life. Release revelation of who you are. Make yourself known to your people right now. Oh God, in Jesus' name I pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Can y'all give God praise? Can you make... I said, can you give him some praise? Let us stand. Let us stand before the Lord. Hallelujah. On next Sunday, next Sunday, uh, July the 11th, we will be worshiping, fellowshipping with Priest Lake Community Church on Anderson Road in Antioch at the 11 o'clock hour for those of you who can come with us. If those of you who can't come with you and still would like to be here, we're going to have a member of our media team will be here and they will stream live on the screen for those of you who can't make it to Priest Lake on next Sunday at 11 o'clock. It's a time for fellowship and a time for us to celebrate not only their church's uh, uh, anniversary, but it's time that the church body enjoys the fellowship with one another. Amen? So remember, next Sunday, if you can make it, uh, be at Priest Lake at the 11 o'clock hour. If you can't, someone will be here to stream live the service from over there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands unto the Lord. And now unto him that's able. I'm, this is so much good news. Watch this. I want you to take this personal. He's able to present you faultless before his own presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, glory. majesty, majesty. 
dominion and power now henceforth and forevermore may the lord your god watch over you may he cause his face to shine upon you may his love his mercy and his grace saturate you and may you reflect his goodness in all that you do in the name of our savior king jesus and the church said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you.